Welcome to OpenJS Grid. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how all the features of OpenJS Grid works. But note that the point of OpenJS Grid is that it's really well commented uh, so that you can learn how all these different features are done. So that's the main goal. And then the other main goal is to make a really simple grid that you can use uh, to do anything with that has all the functionality of some other grids out there, but it's really, really simple to set up. So I'm going to go over the basic setup. I'm going to show you how to add a title, how to change columns, width, the initial sort order, how to do paging, searching, uh, a bunch of resizing, how to do things with the columns, how to freeze rows, and then how to do complex queries, because with a grid you're going to want to do some complex things, and then how to do multiple tables. So let's get started with the basic setup. Uh, this is what it looks like right here. This is how you play with it, and I'll go over more of this in a second, but let's look at the setup. This is all you have to do. Um, this is You have to include the grid CSS file, jQuery, and then the grid.js file. That's the only files you need here. Uh, and just like any jQuery plugin, you just call on the grid, you call load grid. That's the method that will call on the element. So here's the element right here. It is an HTML table with a class grid. Okay, and the class grid is given so we can attach to the load grid here. The kicker here is that it's got an action on it, and the action tells you which PHP file to load the content from. We'll go over that file in a second. Then for each TH, you have a column, and each column basically is uh, simultaneous with the column that is in the database. So uh, we have purchase date, and there's going to be purchase date in the database as well. And then this uh, right here is how you uh, say what the column is going to say. So that's the basically the display of the column. And then optional, you have a width attribute on each here, which will say what the initial width is going to be on the column. Okay, so this is the basic setup. Um, if you want to add a title to the grid, uh, you can say title equals orders, just like that, and that will add a title to the grid just right here. Okay. Now if we want to change the columns, uh, we can do that right here, but let's add a new column. Let's go to the database. This is the orders table. And let's say we want to add user ID. Okay, So we'll add user ID. To do that, we just, let's just copy that and paste it, and we'll say the database column is user ID, and we're just going to call that user, just like that, save and refresh, and now we've added a user column. Very cool. Uh, now let's say we want to change the initial width of that column. Uh, we can just say width equals 200 and that will widen it to 200 and there you go so now it's stuck at wide 200. Now another thing that we can do with these is change our initial sort order so let's say we want to sort by the most expensive so you can click these to sort them um, but what we want to see we want the table to start out in this way which is order by total descending so you can see down here it's going to kind of give us the text of what's going on it's showing us 1 to 10 rows of 1158 total and it's ordered by the total column descending so let's set that up to be that way when we start the grid so that's order total is the name of the column so what we need to do is just add some properties in here we're just going to say order by that and to do the most expensive at the top, we're going to say sort by descending, just like that. Save and refresh, and there we go. Now we're by default do, uh, doing that. If I were to change this to ascending, it would have a bunch of nulls at the top. And there you go. So now we have, because null is the least expensive, right, in case there was some problem with the order. So that's that. Uh, we can change that back to descending, which is fine. Um, now let's look at how you page with the grid. So you've got one of 10 of 1158, so you can hit next, and next, and next, and next, and you can keep seeing new results, and go back, and go back, and go back, and go back. What we can also do is change the number of results, so we can change that to 50, and hit enter, and that will now give us 50 results from the database. And a scroll bar has been given here, and this, this height right here is the max height of this main uh, item, and you can actually set that in the CSS. So another thing we can do is, what we'll, thing to notice here, programming wise, I've added this little extra th up here, which is the size of the scroll bar. That's the reason all these are still in line, so keep that in mind. Uh, so we'll bring this back down to 10, and what we can do is now search. So searching works really well. Uh, if, if you type, it's going to filter. So if I want to find all the ones with 266 in it, 266, I can type in 266, and as I'm typing, it's going to filter. Okay, And if I hit enter, it's actually going to search that back to the database which is pretty cool. So it did 266, and now all these entries have a 266 in them. It's, it's not searching per column, it's searching every column. Uh, I haven't put in there yet how to search per different columns, but right now it'll just search the whole grid. Okay, So that's how you do that, and if you want to go back, just delete everything and hit enter, and that will put you back to with no search query. Um, 
next thing we want to do is resize the column so you can actually resize this right here and you can you know resize whatever um, now re what resizing is also doing is it's, it's kind of making that that width static so uh, let's just right click here and do highlight and keep your eye on that column as I'm changing the size see the size always stays the same and that's because I've resized it once the system is going oh you've resized it let's leave it at that what you can do is right click it and do make fluid and that will actually now make it uh, change the width based on uh, needed space okay so that's a couple features you can do and you can see highlight and unhighlight uh, is an option you have as well uh, something else you can do is delete a column so if you want to delete an items you just hit remove and now it's gone and you don't need to deal with it again okay um, there's no way right now to bring it back right now deleting just removes it uh, another thing you can do is uh, freeze a column so say I want to analyze this 429 I can actually double click it and it'll freeze up here at the top so if I were to have say 50 entries in the database um, I can scroll and you can see that that entry is frozen at the top so I can compare it with anything else in this grid that I want to so a pretty cool way to compare and I can actually double click and do as many as I want and put them all there and you can double click them to send them back down to uh, back down here um, now we want to do some complex fields so let's say this user ID this user not very useful being uh, just an ID so what we really want to do is actually have the name there so let's change this to be the name right so we'll say user we'll say name and then we'll actually call this name now there's no field in the database it's name so we actually have to do a complex query so let's go to the ajax.php file which I don't think I hit on in order to do the ajax file all you have to do is connect to the database require the PHP file and you call grid equals new grid and you pass it the table name that you want and then you just call grid load and it loads the data and then you can just say grid data for the JSON encode so you're just echoing the JSON encode back to the file it's really that simple this is this is all the PHP you have to do um, if you want to do just a basic table so let's talk about how we have to do a little more advanced table with that field um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we want to add a new field right so grid fields is what we're going to add and that's going to be equal to an array so this fields takes an array just like this and in the array we're going to have um, we, we want to have our name field right so we called it name back here we called it name so we have to make sure that we have that name there so in order to do that we're going to say name uh, and that's going to be equal to what complex query well the complex query for this is going to be um, it's where concatting so if we go back to the database we're going to concat um, payer f name and payer l name okay and that's and we could do that but we're actually going to go even further than that and well let's just let's start with that and then we'll do another one so payer f name payer l name so we'll concat um, <clears throat> so we'll do concat and that's payer uh, let's see payer underscore f name right so payer underscore f name uh, comma quote comma uh, payer underscore l name just like that and uh, that will add name in uh, to the fields so that I can use it. So if I refresh, you can see the name shows up. I uh, just had to fix a quick SQL thing. I'll make sure to update that in the release version. Uh, but now you can see that I'm concatting the first and last name. Now let's get even more complicated than that. And let's say, okay, that's great. But let's concat on the users table instead of this current table. So how do we get to a new table? Well, we add some joins, right? So we add grid joins. And that's going to be an array as well. And basically, the joins that we want are we want to let's go back to the database. We want to we're here, and we have this user ID, so we should be able to go to the users table and get first name and last name and concat on that, right? So we'll say uh, left join uh, users, and let me just make sure that was the right table name. Uh, left join users on, and this so I'm just writing SQL here. Left join users on um, orders dot user ID equals uh, users dot and I think it's on this case it's user ID okay so that's the join so instead of doing this we'll just say users dot first name and users dot last name uh, and now I'm concatting on a joined field okay so now refresh and I still have an error uh, I believe that's because you shouldn't have a semicolon there so refresh and different error. Let's take a look at that and that's because users is spelled wrong so once I type everything correctly and it's users not user users 
save and refresh. There we go. Okay, so now we've got the names uh, that are saved in the database, which are not the names that are in the pair, right? So we've concatted on a joined field, okay? And another thing you can do is add a where. I'm not going to add a where right now, but you can add a where statement um, right here, not an array. This one's just a property, but you can add a where here that'll be used in case you need a where statement. So you can see you've got some pretty, uh, you can do anything with the queries at this point. You can do anything you want. You can add joins, add fields, add where clauses, whatever you want. So that's the database. Um, so another thing that we want to do with this is show you that you can have multiple grids, right? So here's one grid. Excellent. So if I want to add another one, how, how hard is it? You just boom, boom, there it is, boom, another one. And there's a second grid right here. And they're completely independent of each other, of course. Uh, if they weren't, it'd be really weird. Um, but there you go. So now you've got two grids, and I can change, you know, um, other, and I can, you know, make this one completely different if I want to. Um, but you can see, you, you, can, you can see how easy it is to use this grid. Um, it, it's really simple, really easy to set up, and I'm going to be releasing this code today on squarebracket.com slash openjs grid which is right or openjs which is right here uh, you can hit this download page uh, and download it right here if you want play with it um, I've tested this on PHP 5.2.3 and I'll be releasing uh, I wouldn't call it an API but I'll be releasing the documentation for the grid so you can learn all the different options you can do and how to use it and all the stuff I talked about in this video that'll be on here as well um, and that will be happening in the next couple days but for now you can grab this take a look and feel free to go to the YouTube video this is on and comment and tell me what you think thanks